Hello class, uh, we're back at the Network Parameters video series and we're going to move on to the next mock exam question. And that is, now that you have models of your circuit, uh, you can cascade them or you can connect them in very different ways. You can literally treat them as individual blocks of applications. And you can see there are four options. And each of these options has a name. And one of the names is called Cascade, Sequential. You've learned this in your digital class. Uh, it's related to series. So the question is, which one of these four options represents a sequential connection for a network? Well, this is the correct answer because they're basically are connected in series where the output of one cascades into the output of the second which means these two network parameters would literally be multiplied by each other in order to get the total output. So whatever value that you get here will be used as a feeder input into the next network. So this is a cascaded. I'm not sure if they're actually multiplied together, but I do know that one output will be used as an input into the next output. And since most of the options in the network parameters are multiplications, there will be multiplication going on. This is how you get higher gains or higher loss in a system. And this is where you build more complicated networks to solve your engineering problems. Now we will move on to the next problem. I think I've covered it. I don't think I need this in order to solve this problem. However, I will borrow this picture here so that I can refer to it when I'm solving the problem. Now this problem asks us to calculate the Z parameters for this two port network where we assume that this port on the left side is V1 and this port on the right side is V2. You could think of this as input and output but it doesn't matter. So our goal is to calculate the four Z parameters of this network. So to make this more efficient what we do is we look at this set here and we make this equal to zero so we can calculate Z double one and Z two one first which means we must set the current in the second network to zero on the output. If there's no current flowing through this resistor that means the voltage drop across this resistor will be equal to zero so there will be no energy lost in this 200 ohm resistors. So we can conclude that V2 will be the same voltage as the 56.25 ohm resistor. You can literally say that they are virtually in parallel, but not in reality, because there's still a 200 ohm resistor here. But virtually, they are in parallel because there is no voltage loss between this node and this node. So once we set I2 is equal to zero, then we can solve for Z1. Okay. Well, Z1, if I2 is equal to zero, is equal to V1 over I1. You can think of this as V total over I total. And we already know how to calculate V total over I total if they give us the value of the resistors. Since all of the current from the source would only go through these first two resistors, basically the value of Z total, Z11, would equal to the 200 ohm resistor, which is in series with the 56 ohm, 56.25 ohm resistor. So Z11 will be 256.25. So we've 
already have solved for Z11. Now Z21 is a little more complicated because we have to take values from one side and the opposite side. Okay. So it is asking us take the opposite voltage which is V2 and divide that by current I1. Well this requires a little bit of cleverness. What we can do to solve this problem is assume a value that will make our work a little bit easier because whatever value that we assume for one we can calculate the other value and then we can divide both of them to get the value of Z. So to make this easy is we can assume a value of one amp for the denominator which means that when we calculate V2 we will actually have the value of Z directly. If we assume that there's only one amp of current going into this network and we've already have assumed that I2 is equal to zero, it means all of the current will flow through these two resistors. And using Ohm's law, that will create a voltage over here of I times R. One amp multiply by the 56.25 ohms would literally give us 56.25 volts. But once we take that value and we divide it by one amp, we'll end up with 56.25 ohms. Now here's something interesting. If you find out the value of Z1 in this, because this is a resistor network, you automatically find out the value of 1, 2. It's like a mirror, because this is just a resistive network and everything is linear. So if you find out the value of 2, 1, you automatically find out the value of 1, 2. So that saves you a little bit of time. Now, we've completed this part over here. Let us work on the second part where we assign this equal to zero. So next time we're going to make I1 is equal to zero. And I'll do that in my next video.